Hey guys, welcome to My So Bliss. Today I'm super excited to be partnering up with Baby Lock Sewing Machines and bringing you another sewing tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make an oven mitt just like this one. This is actually the kid version, but I'm going to show you how you can do your own pattern um, for an adult version if you want to do that. So I'm really excited about this project. This is a free pattern for the kids version and obviously it's also a free pattern for me to show you how to do the adult version. The sewing machine that I'm going to use for this project today is the Baby Lock Zest. This is one of the basic sewing machines in the Baby Lock Genuine Collection and it is a really great machine for beginners. It has a lot of the basic features that you would need to get sewing, to learn how to sew, and really you could use it for so many projects. Um, it's even great if you're an intermediate sewist as well. So I'll put a link down below for where you can go and check that machine out. The supplies that you're going to need are first you're going to need your fabric. I used two different fabrics, one for the outside and then a different kind for the lining. I thought that would be a fun little touch. It's also reversible once it's all finished, so keep that in mind. Um, and then I used some double fold bias tape to finish off this bottom edge and I use it in this bright fun color. That's just from Joann's. And then for the inside, to keep your hands safe from getting hot or burnt, I use this um, batting, also from Joann's. It's called Wrap and Zap, and it's good with heat. Most 100% cotton batting is gonna work for this project. You just wanna make sure you have enough layers so that that heat doesn't reach your hand. Um, another thing with this fabric, you wanna make sure that all your fabrics you're using are also 100% cotton because a polyester or some synthetics will melt when um, they're warmed up. So we don't want your glove melting. And then you're just gonna need all of your basic sewing supplies. So let's get started. For our first step, we need to make sure that you guys have the patterns you need. So this pattern right here, which I'll include the link down below, is a free pattern from Peekaboo Pattern Shop, but it is for little kids, like, um, probably like five to ten I would assume so I mean it looks great on my hand but then once it gets sewn up it's probably gonna be really tight on my hand and I have small hands so if you're doing one for kids this is a great one great for playtime or if you have a kid who likes to start cook wants to start cooking and helping out in the kitchen that's a great size and then I just kind of referenced using my own hand and this pattern to make one for myself. So I kind of spread my fingers out and made it a little bigger. This probably wouldn't work for a man's hand. It's probably still too small. So make sure you're just check on that. And I just drew it by hand. You can see all my markings. I decided that was too tight. So I made it a little wider. Um, and remember, we're also going to be having our seam allowance, which is about a quarter of an inch. But then you also need to account for all the thickness of fabrics that we're going to be using and the batting that we're going to be using. So a lot to keep in mind, but I think you can kind of play around with it if you need to make a tester one and try it on and see how that works. Or you can make a child one. So I have both ready to go and then I cut out all my pieces. Once you have your pattern ready, you can do that. So this is going to be my, I'm doing a lining piece and then... I have this um, batting that's good with heat. You wanna make sure everything you're using is 100% cotton. If it has any synthetics in it, like polyester, um, rayon, or stretch, usually those fabrics are going to melt with heat. So you do not want this melting to your hand or melting on the pan, things like that. So keep that in mind. This batting, um, I just got the one that's says it's good for like microwaves and hot pads and things like that so i'm going to be doing um four layers of it so it's technically two layers per side so two layers on the front and two layers on the back and then this is going to be the fabric on the outside so once i have all of that cut out um, one thing that is going to help a lot in this process is taking each piece and with the wrong side, put it the batting together. And you don't have to do this step. You can do it if you want, you don't have to. But I'm just gonna base those really quick together. So this one, you wanna make sure you have like 
a front and a back. So there we go, front and back. That's important when you're cutting it out. And then I just lay that on top. And same with the front fabric, or my main fabric is what you could call it too. So that'll be on the outside. So now you can go baste those together if you want. They're sticking pretty nicely to my fabric, so I think I'm just gonna leave it as is and I'll continue to show you guys what we're gonna do next. So now I'm gonna take my front pieces and my lining pieces, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm going to put the fabric side, right sides together, and I'm just gonna pin around the hand. We are not gonna sew down here. That is where your hand enters, so make sure you do not sew it closed. Um, but I'll just pin this together, and I'm gonna do it to the lining pieces as well. Over at the sewing machine, I'm just gonna start at the bottom. Again, we're not sewing this closed, and I'm gonna do about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I'll just sew around this oven mitt. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Once your pieces are sewn, before we put them together, you want to kind of trim out the bulk um, and then trim this thumb piece right here, trim right to the stitching. Make sure you don't cut the stitching, but just to it. And then you can kind of trim around here. If you need some extra bulk, you can do some triangle cutouts to really relieve that and give it that round look that we would like to see. And the same with on the hands, the, or I guess the main part, the whole thing is the hand. But just trim, especially around the curves, right over here, making sure not to cut your stitching. Once you have all the trimming done, this is the one that's gonna be right sides out. So I'm just gonna turn it right sides out. It's the outside piece that I want to see this fabric. So I'm gonna poke everything out. If you want to, you can use point turners. My nails kind of work well for that reason, for the most part. And if you see any like weird spots, you can always go back and trim it or cut it a little more. Like if that one tenses too much, I'll trim it. But I think it's looking pretty good. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take this one and there's a couple different ways you could do this. I just found that I like this way and I think it's gonna look really cute. So I'm just gonna put this one inside. It's a little tricky with all the stuffing or batting that kind of sticks. <laughs> so I'm just gonna fit that together as best as I can. And it is gonna be bulky. I made this so that it can actually be used. My hand actually fits really well in it. I'm surprised. <laughs> so that's good. But you want to make sure you can get a good grip when you have hot pads like this. So a bigger size will probably work better for me. But that's good to know. And then if you want to, you can iron that. Um, but now I'm going to finish it off. And I wanted to put a little binding piece on it. I thought that would be so cute. So I think I'm going to try and use this binding. First, though, I am going to 
stitch along here and then trim it real quick just so that stays in place and you can line up your seams make sure it's fitting right and it'll be perfect so i had a little mishap when filming the smaller version of this so this is now the adult version um, that i'm going to show you how i finished off the binding right here so you can see like i said i went around and stitched these together you can still put your hand in there that's important um, but now i'm gonna take this and trim this extra batting and fabric off so if you look really close you can see my stitching right there i'm just gonna trim about an eighth to a quarter of an inch away from that and just go around and prepare it to put that um, batting or that um, double fold bias tape on so there's no like this doesn't have to be perfectly straight or perfectly cut beautifully <laughs> it's kind of a mess looking but as long as we trim it off so we can put that on easier it'll be ready to go okay so there I have it looks good you can try it on I like how on this one I made it a little bit longer because you just never know when you might burn your forearm too <laughs> so now I'm ready to do my double fold bias and this is the one I'm gonna actually be using because this is a true double fold bias. You can see right here how it folds like that. So to do that, we're gonna open it up all the way. And you're gonna be lining up your raw edge of the bias tape with the raw edge of your hand mitt and right sides together. So if I fold it back up, you can see like this is the right side and then I unfold it and it's going to want to fold onto the wrong side. So if I just line this up and I want to leave a tail at the beginning and the end and I'll line it up with the raw edge all the way around and pin that in place. So I only pinned it three times. It's a small opening um, and then I'm just going to leave a tail just like I said before and cut that off so that way it's out of the way but now I can take this over to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch right along this fold right in here it's about a quarter of an inch and I'm going to stitch all the way around but I'm going to start right here so leaving about a two inch tab end opening um, on either side this one will be a little bit longer because I cut it longer but I'm going to go all the way around and then stop right here. So that way we can connect these in a second and finish that off. So I'm gonna go sew that real quick. After you have that sewn, it should look about like this. So I have a little bit of opening with my tails. Here I have, oh, that's starting to fold. Here I have it stitched on. And what's eventually gonna happen is we're gonna fold that up and then it will encase those raw edges and we'll just finish it off like that. And it'll look so nice and just be this really great finishing touch. So, but first we have to, before we do that, I'm gonna unroll that <laughs> back to how it was. First we have to finish off our ends and this can look a little tricky, but once you get it figured out, it's not too bad. Um, there's even tools you can get. I can show you one of the tools that I have for this, but to finish off binding, there we go, once we get it open like that, we're gonna to wanna to put these ends right sides together and really you're gonna create an L shape. So I'm gonna lay it right sides together. This one's gonna come across. I wanna pull it kind of tight, but not that I'm bunching this fabric underneath. So opening it up right sides together, creating this L shape. And then I would pin that in place and I'm gonna sew it at a diagonal. And that's gonna just finish off the binding and make it look really, really nice. And one thing that you can also do is get a ruler and um, a marking tool and just mark where you're going to sew that. And I'll do that for you right now. If you're doing a lot of binding, I highly recommend this tool. It's called the Binding Tool um, by the Quilters Merchantile. And it's really helpful to remember how to do this and it even shows you step by step, talks you through it. 
So this is an option. If you don't have it, that's okay. You can do it, like I said. This is just gonna be really accurate and work every single time. Whereas sometimes I mess this up and it's not as accurate as I want it to be. So just keep that in mind. But I'm gonna show you, I can lay this flat. I'm just gonna use it as a ruler real quick and line up that diagonal. So you can see, here's my L. Open this one up. I might just have to do it on top of my fingers because <laughs> it's on that curve. So we're just going from the intersecting points so of right here to right here. And I'm just going to mark it. Yes, I'm using a pencil. It won't be seen though, so I'm okay with it. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> I got off a little bit. Okay, so there is my diagonal right there. And that's just showing me where I'm stitching. If I want to, I could put a few more pins in there. Even cross like this so that it stays in place better. And then I'm gonna take that over to my sewing machine and I'm just stitching that. And make sure you're just catching this binding piece. You're not catching the oven mitt. Um, and we'll finish this off. Okay, there I have it sewn. Again, just straight across on that diagonal. And before I'm gonna, before we do any cutting, I want to make sure that it's actually going to fit and that I sewed it right. Um, I've done this too many times and messed up, but I always have to make sure and check. So it looks like it's folding correctly. This will come down here and we'll sew that down. So see how it's still, it lines up. There's a little bit extra right here. I didn't pull it quite as tight as I should have, but I'm okay with that. I might actually just do a little tuck in there and call it good. So that way it's all finished. So now with that finished, I'm just gonna take some scissors and cut off these tails and make sure you're just cutting off the tail. You're not cutting any of this um, that we want still on there. And I'm just gonna cut it at about an eighth to a quarter of an inch. Okay, so that's cut off. And now it'll fold a lot better. And if you need to, you can go and iron it. Like I said, mine's a little tiny big. So I'm okay with that. So I'm just gonna pull this up for a second. See, there's a little bit of a gap, but that's okay. Okay, so now we can finish off that stitching. And to do that, we're just going back to where we ended, right here, and connecting it to this side over here. So I'll just fold that down like that. You can pin that in place if you need to, or just pull it tight. And now I'm finishing that off. Okay, once you have that binding sewn all the way around, it should look like this. Now we can fold it up on itself, fold up, look how nice that looks. Make sure you caught everything. There's no like raw edges sticking out. Sometimes that happens. And then this top edge of our binding will fold over and then we fold that on top of our raw edges, just like this. So if you go onto the inside, you'll see and if I need to, I can trim this a little bit smaller, but I think it'll be okay. So I'm just gonna pull that tight and pin that in place. This is a good spot to use your clips too, if you have those. And if you need to trim any threads, now's a good time. It's kind of hard to show you guys, there we go that down. So now I'm just covering those raw edges and getting it prepared for stitching. Once you have that pinned, now let's take it over to the sewing machine and I'll show you how I'm going to stitch that down. Okay, so here I am over the zest. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be stitching from the inside. So here's the inside of my oven mitt and I'm gonna stitch on top of that binding. And if you pull it tight enough, 
it should just come to the outside right along here and not be on your binding. Um, if that bothers you though, if there is some, I would say just match up your threads or you could even do it by hand stitching it. I just wanted to do it a quick and easy way. Um, so I'm just gonna stitch it down with my machine. So I'm just going right along the edge and we'll just start right here and kind of adjust as I go. Do a little back stitch. And we'll continue going around. And then once you are done stitching all the way around on the inside like that, here's what it looks like on the outside. So I just have it on the fabric. It's not even on the binding and it just looks really nice and it's all complete. And then once you have finished off your binding, you are all done with your oven mitt. I hope you guys enjoyed this project. Make sure to check out Baby Lock sewing machines. I'll leave a link down below for the Baby Lock Zest, which is what I used for this project. It's a really great machine, um, perfect for beginners or any really, really any skill level um, and makes some really fun projects. Make sure to subscribe and hit that thumbs up button and I will see you guys next time. Bye.